Next up, taking a peek at the SYNC 4 media screen inside of the eTransit. Now, the Transit does technically have a series of different media screens that are available. But when we look at the eTransit, we're strictly looking at this specific screen, but there are also different options available. So as a default, we're just going to have regular AM, FM. We've got the option for a screen that also features Sirius XM and then a series of other features as well. So there are technically four individual screens that are available. But one thing that I love about this larger screen is that when we've got our rear view camera going, we can see what's going on all around us on this beautiful screen. But let's dive into it and I'll show you everything that you need to know. So this is going to be the base home screen. If we're not on the home screen, we're on any of these other options. We're just going to press the home icon in order to get back to this main screen. So as an e-transit owner, you do have three years of Ford connected navigation included. And then you've got the option of extending your subscription if you wanted to. And then even if you didn't want to, one cool thing is that you can either use Google Maps, Apple Maps, or Waze through iPhone devices or Google Maps through Android devices. So you can use that right through this screen instead. I'll show you how that works when we get to that section. But like I said, we've got factory navigation and actually, since we're there, let's go through. I'll show you how factory nav works. So we've got our nice, fully responsive screen there, which is great. We could, if we want to, we see all these different side buttons there. So we could stretch across oh, if we wanted to. There we go. That's what I was looking for. <laughs> all right. So we can shoot across whatever screen is currently active. So as of right now, we're active there. We could push this little guy to go complete full screen here, which is great or we can shrink it back in instead to show our sidebar. We can also rotate. If we want to rotate instead, we've got different views. So whether that's 3D, head up, etc., We can just go right back to where we are there. We've got our current navigation there as well. So really, really useful that we've got so many options. We've got what direction we're currently facing, what city we're currently in, as well as our elevation off to the side. So I can't actually use the navigation right now because I don't have, I was wondering what that was earlier. because It said that it's, uh, it's not currently active. Interesting. So I can't actually use navigation unless the vehicle is connected. Oh, interesting. Okay. So what I'm going to do is just jump you into an old video where I walk through how to use factory navigation. We press the little hamburger icon on the very top left hand side. That brings us to our map orientation. So we can change out. So we want 3D, 2D, etc. We've got our voice. So we can have whenever we're coming to an upcoming turn, do we want it to be our voice and tone, strictly a voice or strictly a tone? Do we want to show traffic on the map? Do we want to avoid certain things like highways, toll roads, tunnels, things like that? We want to show different things on the map. So point of interest icons. Do we want to show ATMs, attractions, rest areas, parking areas, things like that? We've got options for trailer routing. So if you are for if you are towing your tra towing a trailer inside of the transit, we can have it so that it's trailer friendly routes that we're taking. Options for weather, so we can see what's, see what's going on with our current weather as well. And then we've got some added settings. So so oh, helps if I press the button. Some more settings. We've got our routing and map preferences, so we can have our different options for 3D map. We can go for the fastest or the most eco friendly route. And we can have breadcrumbs. So one of the great things about breadcrumbs is as we go into different places, it's going to drop breadcrumbs, letting us know where we've gone. And back from there, we've got our alert preferences. So if we're in a school zone, railroad alert, things like that, we can have these different alerts come up, letting us know. We've got our basic privacy, and then we've got our about. Predictive destinations are all based off of previous destinations that we've gone to. So it's going to give us the likelihood of us going to those previous destinations. We've got a few different ways that we can search for addresses. So we could just start typing in an address if we want to. We can search based off of GPS coordinates, and which is one of the nice things in this system. You can do it in the previous Sync 3 system, but if you don't know the exact address, but you've got the coordinates, you could just plug, plug in longitude, latitude, longitude and latitude in order to be able to set yourself up that way for the route instead. If our phone was connected and we had a number to call that would be available, we can press this little star icon if we want to save this address as a favorite. And we can also look at alternative routes. So we can kind of jump in between different routes. You can see it moving there as we dynamically press. And then all we have to do is just hit the start icon. Laws. Be alert and use voice commands while driving. And here we go. To the highlighted road. So as you can see there, it's going to let us know what we're going to be doing. How far, how close are we from completing the route? We can press this button in order to go back to that split screen again if we want to. 
press down in order to see the route that we're taking. And then we can also press across. So we can delete the destination there if we want to. Or we can button press this. There we go. If we want to reset the route again. Proceed to the highlighted road. Now, on top of that, we press the menu button now. We're back into these main settings. We can add in a destination. So if we want to stop at a midway point, we can press this in order to see the full route. We can mute out our guidance. And then we can also press the X button there if we want to cancel the route out. So very straightforward. We press the recent button there. And that's going to let us know what routes we've recently taken. Back, we can press the star in order to go to our previously saved destinations. So we can set up a home or a work address. One of the big benefits there is that no matter where we are, we could press the voice command prompt on the steering wheel and say navigate home or navigate to work, navigate to one of these other addresses, and it's automatically going to do that for us. Now, if we go into a previously saved destination, as you can see there, we've got all of the different route options. We can see our parking, and then we can also unsave it that way if we want to. Press back, and it's deleted that previously saved route. And moving back again, we can press this in order to see our recent route. So it's very straightforward in order to be able to use this system. Press the little button there, and that's going to give us our current location. So our coordinates so near a street, and we can also save that information if we want to. But very straightforward using factory navigation inside this vehicle. And back we go. So you do need an active Ford Pass connection. So through your cell phone, you need an active account in order to be able to use the factory navigation here. Good to know. I didn't know that that was the case, but apparently it is. So hopping back to our home screen. Next up, we've got audio. So sources, as of right now, we've just got AM, FM. Bluetooth is obviously if we're hooked up through our cell phone. And then if you were hooked up through your phone, certain apps would also show up as an entertainment source. So you've got some different options there. But we've got AM, FM. We can also seek this way if we want to. We can do a seek this way instead. We've got all of our presets along the very bottom. So if you wanted to, you can easily save a preset, tune to whatever station, and you're just going to press and hold. Oh, save the preset. That simple to do it. We've got our sources there, as I mentioned. We've got direct tune capabilities. So if we wanted to tune to a station this way, we could. A little volume test. Audio, not too shabby inside of this thing, considering it's a cargo van. We've got our sound settings down there. So tone settings, we're able to change out our treble mid-range bass. What I personally find, oh, mid-range there, bass cranked three. So treble down two, mid-range balanced, bass up three, and then balance there. Usually gives some pretty good settings, or some good sound, I should say. I didn't want to go back, I wanted to go to sound settings. We've got our speed compensated volume. So as we're going faster or slower, it's automatically going to increase the volume to offset the speed. And then occupancy for all seats, or do we want to focus strictly on the driver? I mean, obviously, if you're, always, you're going to be the only person in the vehicle, it makes sense to go for the driver instead. Back, back. That's going to be the basics of our sound. And then back home. We've got the flexibility of adding in a phone. Switch for your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found. So on our phone, what we're going to be doing is looking for transit when it shows up. Perfect. For transit. Confirm that the pin displayed on sync matches the pin displayed on your device. Pins match up. Do I want to allow my contacts and favorites? I'm going to say no for now. Perfect. We are fully connected. For your safety, please stay alert to change in road conditions and use sync's voice activated features while your vehicle is in motion. Oh, I thank you. We've got 911 assist, which I definitely recommend setting up. And the big reason why is because if we're ever in an accident, and we're connected through our phone, it's going to automatically dial 911 in the case of serious collisions. So definitely recommend keeping that one enabled when your phone's hooked up. And as of right now, you can see that the phone supports CarPlay, so we could use it this way if we wanted to. So really straightforward, we just hit use CarPlay. Do we want to enable disable? We're going to enable. Three, two, one, we're fully connected. So I love how simple it is in order to be able to set this thing up. We could push along the side there. I love we're full screen here now. It's <laughs> so good. And it looks fantastic. So I I love that we are now pushed so that we can go full screen. I love that Ford made this change. I just, I think it's brilliant. Good job, Ford. Love it. <laughs> but Squirrel, we've got our Apple Maps, we've got Google Maps, and we've got Waze. And we can use all three of these right through the middle screen here. So unfortunately, though, 
this bug still isn't fixed where we can't just do drag and drops here. That's honestly across every manufacturer for Apple CarPlay. So in order to be able to move around, we just have to use the little arrow icons here instead. Not ideal, but it's pretty straightforward. We can search for an address. We can search for an address this way. And then I mentioned we can press and hold on the steering wheel if we want to activate our Google or our Siri assistant. So obviously Siri because we're hooked up through the iPhone. Right along the side, it's what current map application was recently opened. We've got our podcast and calendar. We can jump back home and watch this. So if we go to Apple Maps, it switches it out to Apple Maps instead. And then here, so okay, so good. So it's fixed on Apple Maps, just not on Waze as of yet. Waze, get up to par. <laughs> we need this. And one weird thing, I wonder. Oh, odd. Okay, so we're technically full screen here, but for whatever reason, that's really odd. Yeah, so we're full screen here, but it's given this weird... Uh, so that's a bug. <laughs> Something's got to get worked out. And we've also got Google Maps and... Okay, Google Maps is at least full screen, but same idea. We can't do a drag and drop. We do need to go left and right, up and down this way instead. Moving back home. Straightforward, like we've got Waze, we've got Live One, which is a radio app. Certain apps will work through this screen. Other ones won't. So not every app that you have on your phone is going to work through here, but we've at least got some of the major ones like podcasts and things like that. Now on our phone, if we go into our general settings, we can go into CarPlay, we go to the vehicle, we can customize it, we can turn CarPlay off, forget the vehicle. So we're going to turn it on. And let's say if you're a bigger fan of listening to your podcasts, you also want your radio app and let's go with Waze. So we've got that set up, so we've customized it a little bit. If you're never going to use Waze, we can remove it. It gets rid of it completely here, but it does add it back in along the very bottom. So we could easily add it back in if we want to. If you've played around with it too much, we can just reset in order to bring it back to our home screen there instead. Moving back out, very straightforward. So it's really simple being able to use this. Now if we go back home here instead, you can see that we've got all of our CarPlay connections. So we can click back in to go back into CarPlay. We can jump back out and we can go into apps. And we've got Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and then Live One. So Live One's a radio app. So I did mention it earlier when we're in our audio. We can look at sources now. We've got my phone connection. If we wanted to go that route or we jump back, oh, back into apps, CarPlay, and we're right back into CarPlay there as well. So very straightforward to be able to use CarPlay inside of this thing. So straightforward. Now, just to show you something here, if we go CarPlay, Transit, and we turn it off. So as you see here, CarPlay is disconnected. So we are just hooked up or we're over the regular phone instead. So we've got my phone list there. We've got Siri. We've got the keypad and things like that. Now, if we go over into our audio sources, we've got Bluetooth now. So we can just stream music over Bluetooth instead. We've also got Live One, which is a radio app that we saw on my phone. So we can play all of our music and things like that through CarPlay, or we can just be hooked up over Bluetooth instead. Next up, setting up an Android is the exact same process. So as of right now, we're currently connected. If we go into our phone list here, we can see what phones are currently connected. We've got some phone settings. So we've got the iPhone there, which we connected earlier, but we can manage contacts, text messages. We've got battery warnings and things like that. But setting up the Android now, straightforward, so we're in our connection settings. And then all we're going to do is just add phone. Search for your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found. We're going to go onto our Bluetooth here. We've got Ford Transit. Confirm that the pin displayed on sync matches the pin displayed on your device. Pins match up, so that's perfect. Pairing. For your safety, low contacts, be alert to changing road conditions and use Sync's voice activated features while your vehicle is in motion. Now, just denying access to contacts and things like that, but you could connect it again if you wanted to have your contacts and things like that set up. We're also going to enable Android Auto. I love how quick this is. Do we want to? Yes, let's continue. All right, and three, two, one, we are fully connected here. So I love how simple that is. Now, one thing, so if we look, we are not full screen like what we saw inside of the Apple side of things. So we're still kind of a split screen here, but we can push here if we wanted to go a little bit more of like a fuller screen. We've got some basic settings for our Google Maps there as well. We've also got the flexibility. 
longer press and hold if we wanted to go for our Google Assistant. We can also push the microphone there if we wanted to. We can easily search for addresses. Or you saw there, we've got our basic settings, we've got our root options and things like that. If we push this button here, that's going to bring us back to this little sub screen. We can jump into Google Maps if we want to. We've got our, pot, our music, I should say, our phone. So if we wanted to go for a phone that way, and we've also got some additional settings there. So we've got a series of different options that are available here. More advanced ones through the phone itself, which I'll show you in just a second, but a few basic options, which is great. We're moving back in. All right, now on our phone, if we go to our Android Auto, so we're gonna search for Android Auto, hit Android Auto there. We've also got the flexibility of customizing the launcher. So if we wanted to sh like select which certain apps are showing, when we move into our settings screen here. So, I mean, one thing, I do have Waze installed on this phone, but I mean, as you can see here, we still don't have Waze available. So just Google Maps as of right now. Still is nice we've got that option, but if you wanted to rearrange things, we could. All we're gonna do is just do a press and hold in order to be able to drag. But unlike the, uh, the Apple side, I should say, where everything was dynamic, in order to be able to make any changes here stick, we actually have to get out of Android Auto on both the vehicle and the phone relaunch in order for the changes to take effect so it still isn't updated there and then as i said we don't have the flexibility of going full uh, full screen by the look of it can we oh we can oh, oh okay no we can't okay <laughs> squirrel all right so we can't go full full screen can we hold on okay yeah so we can't go full like true full screen inside of this thing it's like a little half full screen all right so we do have quite a few things going on there but this is as full screen as this is going to get, unfortunately, but it is kind of nice. We still are kind of split screen, almost like what we've, go we've got going on inside of the screen off to the side here. So not as quite, uh, quite as nice of a layout as we had in the Apple CarPlay side, but still is there. Now, if we go into our settings, phone list, we've got both phones connected now. We could disable CarPlay for our Apple uh, Android Auto, I should say. And then as you can see, we've got a few other buttons here. So as of right now, we've got the Galaxy connected for both phone and audio. If we wanted to, we could set up different phones for different things. So we could have the one phone connected for our phone calls, the other phone connected for audio, which is really, really neat. If we go back into our phone settings, we've got both phones now. We can look at some options like managing contacts and things like that, or we just delete, yes. We're gonna go back into phone settings, delete, yes and three, two, one. So that's simple, but that's how you set up an Android and iPhone inside of the Transit. Okay, so straightforward there, adding in a phone. We'll get to the other set. Actually, we're, we'll get to the other settings right now. <laughs> All right, so hopping into our radio, we've got our radio text. So whether that shows up or not on the radio, yes or no. Presets, I always just recommend going to max available presets. Obviously, big reason why is because if you've got, oh, I could have just gone that way. If we've got a boatload of stations that we listen to, we can save all of our available presets there instead. Moving back into our settings, we've got our phone, which we saw earlier, some navigation settings. So we've got all of our map guidance. We can search for addresses by different ways. We've got our coordinates, etc. Notifications, user data, and things like that. Oh, back home. Settings and sound settings, which we saw that earlier. So treble mid-range bass, speed compensated volume, and I press the home button again. <laughs> we've got some vehicle settings, onboard serial number, and our delay. So if we've got the rear camera on because we're in reverse, we go to drive forward. And with this going, what's going to happen is it's going to keep the rear view on for a few seconds afterwards. We've got our clock settings. So do we want to change hours or minutes? AM, PM. Do we want the military time instead? So 24 hour mode. And then do we want the vehicle automatically updating the time based off of our GPS location? Series of different general settings. So do we want to go English, Spanish, French, kilometers, miles, Celsius, the beeping that we're getting? If that drives you nuts, you could turn it off. We've got all of our software licenses and we can also do a reset for either Ford Pass or a master reset to bring the vehicle back to our defaults instead. Our display, a few other settings there. So we've got our calming screen, which we do technically have a button right down here. We can push to get to that calming screen again or bring it back. We can adjust the brightness. We've also got different modes. So this technically is the daytime mode, but in auto, it'll switch between the day or the nighttime, just depending on how bright it is outside. I personally love that darker look for this mode, but it's going to be a matter of preference and you can switch it out either way if you like. 
Moving across, we've got some connectivity settings. So we've got some different connected features, Bluetooth, wireless projection, etc. So do we want to turn all of our different data and privacy settings off? I'd personally recommend it, but it's a matter of preference there. Bluetooth settings, do we want to turn that off or do we want to change our vehicle name? So if we want to have a unique vehicle, so Amazon's Transit, whatever the case may be, you've got that flexibility. We've got our wi wireless app projection there as well. Manage Wi-Fi networks. So if we want to make sure that we're using our Wi-Fi network at home to update, we're just going to go through, connect to our network at home, and then we're set to go. On that one, whenever we do updates, it does take quite a little bit to do software updates, like three to four to six hours, depending on the size of the update, because it's got to download like multiple gigabytes for the file size and then install it as well. So it can take quite a little bit to update. So I just recommend setting it to auto and it'll just do it automatically overnight. Vehicle hotspot. We do have the flexibility of using our phone as a hot, our vehicle, I should say, as a hotspot to be able to connect a number of devices. But we do need a data only plan through our cell phone provider in order to be able to use that. But if we are using it, do we want the hotspot on? Yes or no? What settings are we currently enabling? So what do we want our network name to be? Our password, etc. We can manage devices so that connected devices and we can block them out. And then just basic help getting started. Very straightforward there. I love how it's just like a simple walkthrough. From there, we've got our Ford Assistant. So Ford Assistant, so rather than pressing the command prompt on the steering wheel, we'd be able to say, actually, if we listen to wake word, so we could say things like, OK, Ford, OK, Ford, pass, etc. Oh, there you go. You see there, it's launched these up for us instead. Advanced mode means that we won't get as many notifications as we go. Phone confirmation. Do you want to call such and such person? Yes or no. And then our command list is this list that shows up. I honestly just recommend using the list until you get a hang of uh, the hang of how all of this works. And then we've got our command help on top of that. So what can the voice command prompts do? So we've got our mobile apps, climate, media, things like that. Moving back, we've got our 911 assistant there as well. And 911 assistant, you obviously need an active cell phone. Now, because I connected the phone earlier, if for whatever reason we are in an accident, the vehicle is actually going to attempt to reconnect first. Uh, but I mean, obviously you want to make sure that you're driving around with your phone connected just in case of a major accident. And we've got our valet mode. When we enter in a four digit number, it's going to lock all of the screen functions out with the exception of climate control. So just an added safety setting. Moving back home, we've got a series of different features. So different drive modes, which we can either get to the drive modes through the screen there, or we can push the little button down here. And that's going to get us to either normal, eco or slippery mode. And then each mode does something different. So it's going to play with traction and stability control and things like that, just based off of the mode that you've selected. We've got different access as well, so we can have our charge port light come on, yes, no. And then if we're connected, we can also lock the charge cord in place as well. So people just can't pull it out and unlock it for uh, disconnect it. We've got our departure and comfort there as well. So you can see I was playing around with that one earlier. So we're just going to clear all of that one and I'll show you how it works. So we've cleared all of these different settings, but let's say if we have a tendency to leave at the same time, Monday to Friday, and that is... Da -da -da -da. Six o'clock in the morning, nice and early. What we can do is we can have it come on so that it's automatically going to make the cabin nice and cool for us. So it'll take a second there. And then at 6.05 a.m., Monday to Friday, it's going to automatically cool the vehicle off at that time. So leading up to 6.05. And then same idea if you want to have it come on for heat, for warm, whatever the case may be, or we can just clear all. If you never want to have it automatically set the precondition for the vehicle for you. But I definitely recommend using that one and be sure you're plugged in in order to be able to maximize the battery as well. We've also got charge settings. So we can see how much we've currently got charged for the vehicle. So we're sitting at 61%. Charge locations. So if we add new, that's going to be for the dealership here. We've got that as our home address if we want, our work address or custom address. And then how do we want, do we want to max out the charge? So do we want to let it charge up to 100%? Yes or no? and then continue to schedule. So we've got a few different ones, whether that's weekdays or weekends. And then from there, it's a matter of when do we want to be charging this thing? So our charge window, really, really useful because obviously if you want to save on electricity, you don't want to be charging at certain times. So we've got the flexibility of saying when we do versus when we don't want the vehicle charged. And like we can select a few different, well, two, okay, two different charging windows. 
So we're going to charge between then and then, and then maybe between then. Oh, got to drag, 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 drag. <laughs> okay, there we go. So we can drag it out this way instead. So if you want to charge between certain charging windows, you would have that flexibility. So if we continue out, maximum charge there, we're going to save that. So what's going to happen is for this charge location, between these hours, it's going to charge up to 100% for us. So if you're at work, you're at home, whatever the case may be, you can set up certain charge times and locations, or we can just scrap it if we wanted to go that route. Really straightforward, and then that's the time to current, oh, which we saw a second ago, four and a half hours to charge from 61 up to 100. So the charge times are going to depend on whether we're 120 versus 240, if you're supercharging, whatever the case may be. And then departure and comfort, which we already saw. Charge settings, and then we've also got a digital owner's manual. So if you've got weird things popping up on the cluster screen, you're not really sure what they mean. We can do a category search, visual search, etc. And then we've also got our app screen. So we've got Find Mobile Apps, we've got Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and then we've also got our app help screen there as well. It's all very straightforward. Along the very bottom, we also do have our digital climate. We do have the flexibility I mentioned earlier to use our voice if we wanted to change the temperature this way instead. So you do have that flexibility. Just if you're not a fan of doing the drag and drop there, but I mean, really straightforward, we can drag and drop this way. We can go this way instead. This eventually will auto collapse if we don't touch it for a bit. We've got our circulation, auto mode, max windshield defroster. Do we want this going to our windshield face feet? Some sort of Frankenstein combination of all the above. We can turn the system off there, bring it back down, air conditioning, and then same idea for our fan. So we can either go plus or minus here, or we can just do a drag and drop that way instead. So you've got quite a few different options that you've got in order to be able to adjust these things out. I know a lot of information there, but that's everything you need to know about the Sync 4 media screen inside of the Ford e-Transit.